My name is Graham Johnston and I'm here from Arran Youth Foundations, which is a charity based on the Isle of Arran. Um, and I'm here to talk about youth work approaches to support mental health and wellbeing. So in 2018, AYF won the Mental Health and Wellbeing Award at Youth Link Scotland's National Youth Work Awards. One of the reasons I believe that we won is because of the success we have had putting good support networks in place for young people's well-being. So that's what I'll talk about today. I'll start by outlining why AYF exists and give a general overview of our work, um, which should give the context to the support that we talk about later. While there's a vast array of benefits to living on the Isle of Arran, life on a beautiful island is not as perfect as many mistakenly believe. For an island that seems so idyllic to holidaymakers, it can be hard to explain rural deprivation. We have young people who live in caravans, have suffered from abuse, use the food bank, struggle with low mental health, have learning disabilities, or turn to drugs and alcohol out of boredom. The work of Arran Youth Foundations has significantly challenged the view of old that there is no one who cares about young people. In 2010, AYF took on its first employee, myself as Youth Work Project Manager. This was so long ago that I still had hair, believe it or not. At the time, activities ran once a week from a tiny green porter cabin, which we have a picture of. And I'm not joking when I say it was tiny. Since then, things have grown remarkably. We now have a second employee, part-time youth worker Holly Watkins, and use the council's youth worker Moira Manson on a sessional basis. We now run at least 15 weekly clubs from a fantastic youth centre based at the back of Arran High School that has been entirely decorated and refurbished by young people for young people. The youth cabins are open on a daily basis for lunchtime drop-in, giving young people an opportunity to relax on their lunch break, socialise, play Xbox, get a game of pool. On a Monday, we run a unique cooking project, teaching culinary skills. The highlight of Cooking Club is an annual night at the Akrani's 1869 restaurant with invited guests where youngsters prepare a three-course meal under the guidance of head chefs. Just recently, we've added um, after-school after girls football as well on a Monday. On Tuesdays, Holly delivers three sessions of one-to-one -one mentoring for young people with complex needs. Much of this is through partnership with social services. Every Wednesday, we have an art psychotherapy group with a trained professional, helping young people with their mental health. AYF also funds six sessions of one-to-one -one time with the therapist for anyone who wishes, prompting referrals from high school teachers, GPs, and social services. Over 20 young people enjoy professional guitar tuition from rock school tutor Steve Agnew. This is funded by an individual who donates to AYF, meaning free tuition is provided for vulnerable youngsters who otherwise couldn't afford such an opportunity. Students have the chance to sit exams and earn accreditation. We also have our Mixed Abilities Running Club for youths, which has seen a core group progress from absolute beginners to seasoned runners. Every Thursday at Youth Forum, a committee of young people meet to tackle issues important to local youngsters. They've organized, amongst other things, a sports weekend, an end of exams disco, a series of summer trips, secured funding for the group, and the renovation of their youth cabins. Forum members work towards Dynamic Youth and Youth Achievement Awards. Through Forum, our youth workers assisted a youngster in a successful bid to become a member of Scottish Youth Parliament, which is here today somewhere. AYF took her to YouthLink Scotland's Mental Health Conference and also supported her to develop and launch our LGBT club. Through this group, youngsters have received LGBT-specific sexual health education, anti-bullying activities, support on coming out, transitioning gender, reporting hate crimes, fun social nights with other clubs, and so much more. On Fridays, we have our biggest group, 
with numbers anywhere between 40 and 70. Friday drop-in is a varied night that includes sport, games, dance, movie nights, or tackling issues such as smoking, alcohol, and drugs. As well as all of this, we run an annual program of trips and activities throughout the school holidays. This includes our big trip to Alton Towers. We learn car mechanics at the Three Towns Motor Project, take part in outdoor education, such as abseiling, gorge walking, paragliding, mountain biking, climbing goat fell, and much more besides. As always, all of this is provided free of charge, ensuring things are open to all and poverty is never a barrier to engaging with AYF. Young people are heavily involved in the planning and delivery of the work of AYF. It's very much their organization. Young people help plan the project via planning meetings and by sending representatives to AYF's committee meetings. Two 20-year-olds who have been a part of AYF for seven years now have recently joined the committee. Young members also help organize fundraisers. AYF helped to build the capacity of young people in many other ways. Our youth workers support many young people with serious, serious issues such as abuse, suicide, sexual assault, and bullying. They listen to young people who want to discuss grief, stress, self-harm, and mental health. As well as receiving help from AYF, many of its young members are also referred on to counseling, GPs, CAMs, Penumbra Self-Harm Charity, and other professional services. We enjoy a strong relationship with social services who have referred many young people to AYF's activities. So I hope that's given a general overview of the work that AYF does and can give a little context when I now talk about how we help young people with their mental health. Many young folk come to myself and Holly for support. This is because we have built such strong relationships with them through the work that we do that I've just talked about. And because we now have such a positive reputation within the community. The support that we offer is so successful and rated so highly by young people because it is organic and non-prescriptive. Every young person's individual needs are taken into account and we react accordingly. We'll meet them in their own space. To give examples, I have previously taken a young person out for coffee to discuss their depression, conducted a home visit to support a young person who was self-harming, jointly conducted GP appointments with one of the doctors at the quest of young people. Um, I, I was interested to hear one of the speakers talk about that earlier, about how young people don't always know that you can go to your GP on your own or with a friend or with a youth worker. Um, I think most young people still think that you have to go with a parent. Um, we've taken a transgender young person to his gender clinic appointments on the mainland. We've continued to offer support with regular visits to a young person after they were removed from the family home and moved to the mainland. We've made visits to a young person in hospital after he was sectioned. Met a young person in Glasgow where they now attend uni to provide continuing support and offer one-to-one -one sessions to a young person who was feeling suicidal. Many of these young people now have great success stories. The young person who was sectioned spent his birthday in hospital last year, where I went up and spent the afternoon with him as he was so distraught. This weekend, I spent his next birthday with him on Aaron at home with his family and friends surrounding him. It is not a one-size-fits-all service we provide, but a very personal response to every young person's individual needs. Much of the advice that resonates with young people is simple, common sense, and refreshing. For instance, I think telling young people that their schoolwork and exams are not actually as important as schools and parents so often make out is a worthwhile contribution to the conversation, precisely because it's so refreshing and makes such a difference to them. Hopefully young folk up this side agree with me that there's too much pressure put on you. If you sit down with someone who's in that situation and is stressed to the high heavens about it and explain to them why exams do matter, 
but to nowhere near the extent that they're being told. It's a real light bulb moment, and you can physically see the difference that that realization makes. In discussion, in discussion myself and the GP principal have recognized that in a time when services are being cut and waiting lists are growing, it's vital that we make do with what we have and increase self-resilience. A young person on Aaron may have access to professional help that isn't available until several months down the line, or may even find that the service they need isn't available to them on Aaron. So we're therefore trying in everything that we do with AYF to help build young people's self-resilience, being proactive rather than just moaning about what's not available. This might be something as simple as giving good advice on taking care of yourself to someone with depression. We can offer them professional support, and the counselling that we offer is with a small C, but we can give them the tools and the strength to get better. So I'll give you some examples of the kind of thing we might be saying to young people. Don't use your smartphone before bed. Turn off notifications. Drink less caffeine. Get a better sleep. Eat a better breakfast before going out in the morning. Remember to eat and drink throughout the day and take care of yourself. Exercise. Talk to them about the negative impact of drugs or alcohol on someone who already has low mental health. Don't do what others want or expect you to do, but find something in life that makes you happy and pursue that. Treat yourself as you would others. It's amazing the amount of kids that we see who will tell me that they told their pal to go and get counselling, but when it comes to themselves, they'll not do the same. Use a calendar to bring order to the chaos. Make a study plan. But also make time for yourself. Take part in a hobby, read a book, have a bath. Treat low mental health like you would any other ailment. If you had a broken leg, you'd get it seen to. If you had a sore head, you'd take painkillers. I know none of this is revelatory, but it is so effective in its simplicity. And we've been told again and again how much this sort of advice has helped. When young people are in that dark tunnel and can't see the light at the end of it, one of the most effective bits of advice that we give them is the reminder that mental health is something that everybody has. Everyone, therefore, has peaks and troughs. Depression, low mental health, it doesn't care for fame, wealth, power. It's okay not to feel okay, so long as you remember you'll come out the other side of it. Once you're out the other side of it, remember that you won't always feel this well and take steps to maintain your well-being. It's something that requires work and taking care of yourself. An essential strand to all of this is equipping young people to have agency, to take the power back. We ask them, think of everything that's bothering you in terms of what you can easily do something about, what you can do something about with some hard work, and what you literally can't do anything about. Tackle some of the things within your control. Make your bed, tidy your room, do the chores your mum's been nagging you about, get some exercise. Create a plan to tackle the harder tasks and ask yourself, is it worth worrying about those things that are out with your control? Reordering your problems like this, even in the form of actually writing it down in lists, can be another really powerful light bulb moment. When you're stressed and feel everything getting on top of you, just looking at it in this way and taking the decision to work on one or two small tasks can feel like you're clawing a way out of the chaos. All of this coupled with our strong partnerships in the community has proven really helpful for young people. Young people can see that we have strong links with the high school, GPs, social services, police, mental health services. So they therefore understand that these are not individual institutions, but parts of a holistic approach. Agencies that work together, share information, and sing from the same hymn sheet. Social workers visit the youth cabins every few weeks to discuss individuals we are both working with. GPs regularly visit the group for informal sessions. And young folk have twice run workshops for Aaron's NHS staff on LGBT issues. The police visited last month and many of the teachers at the high school volunteer their time at lunchtime drop-in. So in closing, 
I think one of the key things that has really bolstered our work on mental health has been being part of and helping build a tight-knit community on Arran, especially between those involved with young people. Keeping our advice simplistic and effective whilst responding to individuals' needs in a very personal way has also been important. Thanks for listening. <laughs>